Hi everybody, welcome to the Manifold channel. Today we're going to learn how to use point and click tools in, S in the SQL for ArcGIS Pro add-in uh, to do some uh, really spectacular and sophisticated uh, SQL things uh, without actually having to, uh, having to learn how to do that SQL. We're going to, we're going to the, the point and click tools encapsulate the SQL functions for us and, and uh, everything that we need to know and we just need to be able to click on the dialogues. We're going to work with this map right here which uh, shows uh, uh, Canada, Mexico, and the United States. As you can see, there's that feature class borders as outlines. And these are simplified outlines taken from uh, uh, natural earth. And if I click here into the United States to uh, select that, you can see there's the outline of the border there. If I click, say, over here to select uh, Canada, let's go ahead and do that again, you can see there's the border of Canada. And you can see that along this border here, the border outline of that object for Canada exactly coincides with the border outline of, the, of that object of the United States border outline. So, so right along here, there's actually two lines, two polylines, one from Canada and one from the United States. What we want to do is we want to pick out this common line, which is the border between Alaska and Canada, uh, this, pile, this uh, line right there, which is the well, lines, which are the border between uh, Canada and the United States, and also this line right here, the border between the United States and Mexico. And uh, what we want to do is we want to pick out those lines and we want to get just those where there's an exact overlap you know, they're, they're exactly coincidental and uh, where they exactly coincide. And then we want to merge them together. This is only one line in each location. And we're going to do that using uh, the, uh, the add-in. Now, before we do that, uh, let's take a look at the uh, attribute table for uh, the borders uh, feature class. And you can see it, it doesn't have very many fields here. It just has a name, uh, the, ge the geometry, and the object ID. So uh, let's... Uh, uh, this is imported from uh, a, a different uh, uh, JS package, and uh, let's close this. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add an in integer field called count. I'm going to use the design uh, fields uh, dialog for that. So let's click here to add a new field, and the new field I'm going to count call count. And the alias, let's make that count as well. It's going to be a numeric field, so let's save, applying changes. We could also do this in the add-in, but uh, I'll do this in uh, Arc, so in Pro, so that you know people that are more familiar with Pro will, you know, can see this. Now let's open up the attribute table, and you can see it has this new field called count, and there's nulls that have been added to it. Great. So now let's shift gears and let's go into the add-in. And the way to do that is click there to the add-in tab, and then click SQL to open SQL. So here's the uh, add-in that's launched, uh, and uh, let's let's expand it so it, it fills the uh, screen. We don't have very much. Uh, uh, to view here, and uh, I'm going to get rid of these uh, various uh, panes that I worked with earlier. When when the when the add-in opens up by the default, the first thing you see it's going to just go to open up with the project pane like that. And what it'll do is it'll have the schema pane here that that shows you the schema of uh, of all the. It's going to be loaded with all the geodatabases that are used in the ArcGIS Pro project. I can open them like that, and it has here the the command one to do SQL with a uh, kind of a sample uh, starter query there, just to show you how stuff works. We're not going to be using SQL today. We're just going to be using the uh, 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 built-in panes. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this borders table uh, that's uh, in the in the GDB. That's the feature class. I'm going to copy it, and then I'm going to click down here into this bottom part of the project pane and click paste. And what I've just done is I I've made a copy of the borders table and I put it into the uh, uh, scratchpad storage for SQL. SQL for ArcGIS Pro is actually a full-fledged uh, spatial database. It's a parallel database. And we're going to be working in that database because that doing that is much, much faster than working in the uh, file geodatabase. It's uh, probably 20 to 100 times faster than the file geodata geodatabase. So it's a lot easier just to use the scratch pad memory here. So here's our table. And you can see this thing called borders. And uh, that's the same borders uh, uh, table that we had. Uh, that was the attribute table uh, for in ARC. So, uh, l l but it's a copy. It's, it's not linked. It's an actual copy that's in local storage in scratch pad. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on the transform pane. Click panes transform. And uh, what I want to do is, is I want to do, uh, I'm going to uh, work with the, ge the geometry field, which is there. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, split it into uh, segments. What I want to do is I want to take all the uh, uh, the borders and to split the pile lines into individual segments. And I want to split them into here segments. And uh, I'm going to put that in a table called segments. And while I'm at it, I'm going to create a drawing called uh, segments as well. So we can visualize that uh, in the add-in. The add-in can actually visualize it. Uh, if I click Transform, that's now going to create a new thing called Segments and Segments Drawing. If I pop up in Segments Drawing, 
you can see uh, that looks a little bit uh, grungy there because it, 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 it's, it's throwing in uh, uh, dots where all the different segments, each individual line segment, what used to be one giant polyline is now an individual segment, which you can see by picking various parts of it like that by all clicking it to select it. And let's deselect all those. Let's go back here. Uh, and uh, what we want to do, what I want to do now is I want to, uh, on the segments table, I want to I want to do a self join to fill in this count. And with the and with the way the self join, it's going to be a spatial self join. And to do that, we have to use the join dialog working with the segments drawing. I'm going to click Edit, Join. And I want to do a self join between the segments drawing and the segments drawing. Every case where one geometry completely contains another geometry. And what I'll do here is uh, for the object ID, I'm going to take the uh, count of that and put that value into the count field. Uh, now, we're going here really fast. I'm not explaining all the, all the different details of the drawing because that's all covered in the documentation and there's lots of extensive documentation. Uh, if I wanted to see what the SQL that's behind all this, I could click set up join and edit query and that would open up a command window that shows the massively sophisticated SQL query that does all this because all this is happening in SQL. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use the join dialog to do that self join for me and I'm going to click join and bang, the join is done. It's that fast. If I take a look here at the segments table, now you can see that the count has been filled. And every place in the segments drawing where there is just a one line segment like here, the count is going to be one. But in places where there's two line segments that overlap each other, like along this borderline and along that borderline and along this, that borderline, uh, the count is going to be two. And if we scroll down to the table, you can see that there are indeed places where there are two. So I want to select all those. And uh, the way to select all those, the easiest way to do that is to view panes. Let's uh, click open the select pane. And uh, for the count, I want to search on the count. I want to click every place where the count is two. I want to select all that. I click select. And there, I've selected all those. So let's close that pane. And you can see we just selected all those uh, places where the uh, count is two for those segments. And uh, I want to delete everything except those. So the way I do that is here in the segments drawing, I just click uh, uh, Control I. I can either choose a view, excuse me, I can choose a edit, select inverse, or what a lot of people do is they just use Control I. So I've just inverted the selection. Now what I can do is I choose Edit, Delete, Delete on selected records. Yep, and everything in segments drawing except these uh, segments where there's a, a count of two has been deleted. Uh, but now we have it. If we, if we if we were to zoom in close to any of these things, in each one of these little segments, we'd actually have two line segments. One contributed by Canada. One contributed by the United States. And uh, we don't want that. We want all those to be just merged together. So to do to merge all those together, what we're going to do is we're going to use with the, on the geom field, I'm going to use the uh, merge transform. And what I want to do is I want to merge everything into uh, the line into a line. Uh, and I'm not doing anything grouping. I'm grouping anything. I'm just going to merge everything that overlaps into a single line. And I'm going to put all that into a new table called merged. And I'll also create a new drawing called uh, merge drawing. I'm doing everything here step by step, putting everything into intermediate drawings so you can see how the whole process works. Uh, if I want, I can do a preview that will show me how all these merges come together. You can see the blue lines that it's going to create. And uh, let's go for it. Let's create that transform. And so I've just created a new, let's get rid of this, let's get rid of that. Uh, and uh, let's, turn, let's open up merge drawing. And now what I've done here is these kind of look the same way, but if, you, but if I click uh, control click on any one of them to select it, you can see control clicking on this one selects all of them. And if I open up the merge drawing uh, table, you can see there's only one object. It's a pretty big complicated object. It's, uh, it's got a lot of uh, uh, branches in it. These are all big branches and if I alt click uh, say one of these, that'll pop up the info, the info field and I can see every place where there's this little symbol here that's a branch. So the way all these things came together, it's one big massively complicated uh, uh, multi-line and that multi-line is composed of many different individual branches uh, and the reason that happened is because uh, uh, when all the various little direction changes that came in from all the segments we came, those were all put together as branches. So I want to clean that up a little bit and what I want to do is I want to uh, just basically make this three big branches and the way I do that is a uh, uh, way I clean it up is I use the uh, transform template called clean. All this is being all, all this is, is being powered by SQL in the background. So if I wanted to clean these and uh, what I want to do for the geometry, I want to normalize the metric and uh, I wanted to see what the SQL for that is like. I can pop up a command, and that shows you how to use SQL commands to uh, 
uh, to do the uh, clean but uh, I'm not going to do that I'm just going to uh, uh, use the uh, transform plane which is point and click so uh, let's uh, transform we'll do that in place and that's now cleaned if I take a look at what, what this what this does uh, I can now con control click on that and that's that has all that is all one clean large multi-line and uh, let's uh, deselect all that and uh, uh, let's take a look at what the geometry of that looks like here by looking at the coordinates. You can see that where, whereas before all the coordinates, there were all these different, you know, just about every segment was it with its own branch where they were merged together. Now there's only three big branches. So the final step of the process of what I want to do is I want to take this one big multi-line, which is three branches, and I want to split that out into by branches. So to split that out by branches, I'm going to use the transform. You guessed it, split. And I'm going to split into uh, branches. And I'm going to put those branches into a new table called common. And uh, we'll call it a common drawing. We'll create both a drawing and a table. And uh, that looks pretty good. So let's click uh, transform. And as you can see, that's created a new drawing and table called common. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of merge. merged. And now let's open up common drawing. This all seems to look like the same thing, but but now you can see that these are all three separate objects. They're three different line objects, as we can choose see by selecting them in turn or by opening up the, the attribute table. So you can see there's one, two, three line objects right there. All right, uh, the last thing we want to do is we want to get ready to export this. We want to put this back in the GDB. And what I'll do is I'll clean this up a little bit because you know we don't need the count field anymore. We don't need the MFD ID field, which uh, manifold excuse me, which SQL for ArcGIS Pro automatically adds to uh, facilitate work here. This, this, is, this is a separate ID field. Uh, so the way we'll uh, get rid of those is uh, we'll use the schema dialog, edit schema, and uh, we'll just take uh, FDID and count, and uh, we'll delete those. Uh, delete the indices that depend on those. Yeah, we want to delete this index there, sure. Save changes, and there you can see the table is now just has those three fields, and those the, that is what we're going to uh, uh, put back into the uh, GDB and the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to click uh, copy and then click up here in the borders GDB and click paste and what I've just just done is I've added that feature class as a table called common back into the borders GDB so uh, that's now going to be available for use within ARC and uh, to do that let's uh, switch back to the ARC session and what I want to do is I want to add that common uh, the new uh, common uh, feature class into this uh, display into this map and to do that, I will, of course, click on Add Data. And uh, back here in the Borders GDB, notice that uh, uh, it, doesn't, it does not appear. There's, a, there's, a, there's an, a feature class called uh, Common. That's because we have yet to refresh this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on and click on here, and then I'm going to click on the F5 key, which is Refresh. And uh, ArcGIS Pro doesn't always pick up on changes in uh, file geodatabases if they've been changed by some other process. You have to refresh it. So now you can see there's our Common layer. So I'll click that and click OK. And there, I've just added it. So if we turn off borders, you can see that, uh, turn off the borders uh, layer here, you can see there's our common layer that we've created. And this common uh, that common layer uh, it consists of uh, three separate uh, objects. There's one, that's, th that's the polyline. Here's another polyline, which is the uh, common border. Oh, come on. Common border between uh, uh, the, uh, Alaska and Canada. And here's another common one, which is the border with Mexico. So that was our job, and uh, uh, to do that manually uh, using different tools, uh, you know, can take take a, a lot more. Uh, we did this in the uh, SQL for ArcGIS Pro add-in using point-and-click dialogs. Uh, that saved us from writing a, a lot of SQL. It saved it also uh, pr by using the multi-step process and sort of saving each intermediate step in uh, Scratchpad memory. Uh, we were uh, able to uh, uh, do a very high reliability workflow. We could check our work at each step of the way and uh, see exactly what we created. And if, there, if, if at any step we did something wrong, we could just delete that result and go back and, and do it right, you know, from the prior step. So that's an extremely convenient way to work. Uh, it, you know, doing it the step-by-step -step way uh, is easier for beginners. It may seem like it takes a while, but getting the job right the first time and uh, uh, getting it done regardless how how complex this workflow would work if we wanted to find common borders between say all countries in the world or uh, not just uh, you know uh, a, a few polylines but uh, you know like uh, 
you know, 100 million records, it would still work and it would work great. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, quick demonstration of how to use point and click tools. This is what's called advanced mode in SQL for ArcGIS Pro. It's, uh, uh, but as you can see, it, it uh, results in some uh, really uh, nifty uh, spatial power. Uh, so thanks for watching. Tell your friends and uh, goodbye from Manifold Land. Well, that was fun. If you'd like to see more, visit us at sql4arc.com. Remember, Manifold delivers the world's most advanced, highest quality spatial products for GIS and DBMS at a low price that you can afford. Thanks for watching.